Hi. Chris is gone. Where'd you go? Oh, probably yeah. sleeping. It must be uh, from Milwaukee, or is it from Florida to Milwaukee video? Yeah. Um, so regarding that, um, first off, let's talk about the uh, tragedy um, in Nashville. Um, I was there. I'm obviously safe, so yeah. there's that. Um, but 25 people um, perished, mm -hmm. um, 200 plus wounded. Um, it ripped 80 three miles across central Tennessee. Um, Greater than E3 to E4? E, e, yes. EF4, excuse me. It upgraded from an E3 to an EF3 to an EF4, which um, for any of you that need to know the Fujita scale, um, it basically depicts how much it eats. Yeah. Um, I, I know eats is not really, I don't want to use the word it's like a, you know... How much it basic, destroys. Yeah. I didn't want to say it, but how much it destroys. Yeah. Um, an F5 could relocate a whole town. Well, it's, it's just exactly how they describe it in the movie Twister. It's like the finger from God. Yeah. yeah. Now you're going to make me go watch that movie. Mm. But, um... Nashville is uh, definitely uh, getting around to supporting their community in a very strong way. Yeah, uh, we what? saw uh, Yossi, Forsberg, and Watson all take to Twitter. Blackwell, Trennan, um, even uh, Igor Afanasyev went to Twitter, and he uh, um, had prayers to Nashville was his tweet. Yeah, so um, a lot of love, a lot of support. Um, Matt Irwin had Nashville strong on his Anaheim duck stick. Nice. So there was uh, PK Subban did the same. Um, so, uh, there's, uh, Shea Weber did the same, mm -hmm. uh, tonight, uh, so there's a lot of, um, there's been donations from everyone from Faith Hill to Taylor Swift, uh, the whole Cyrus family. Even, was it even, uh, rivaling, uh, hockey clubs too? Yep, they got the Minnesota Wild and their owner, the NHL themselves, um, we've Black got Hawks. the Blackhawks. We've got the Tennessee Titans donating one million dollars to this. Yeah, that's that's incredible to see this kind of support. Also, Nashville fans, if you are watching this, or Florida Everblades fans that want to take the trip to Nashville to to today, because you guys are gonna see this on the fifth. So today, if you go to Nashville today, sections one hundred five and one hundred six will have a stand with Nashville Strong shirts with the logo right here mm -hmm. on them and you can pick one up for 20 to 40 bucks and all the proceeds will go to help uh, local charities rebuild their their lovely city mm -hmm. um, as I say lovely because I was just there and I obviously like I said I could uh, in our Admiral's video if you want more details on what I saw and what I witnessed go check out them or you can come find me on my Facebook page Daniel Ross good about on Facebook mm -hmm. but like again, we also will be including a uh, a link uh, in the description below to to one of the uh, pro more prominent yes. donation groups. So there should be uh, like a direct link to the uh, Central Tennessee Tornado Funds. Um, like even though we're like we're Milwaukeeans, we're uh, Nashville's a part of our organization. Been a part. We've been a part of their organization since day since, one. Since day one of their inauguration. Um, and uh, we're grateful because they've given us a lot of good players to develop, and they're grateful because we developed them. Giving us the opportunity to develop them. Yes. Because um, I believe we're now the second longest affiliation. Next to Hershey. Next to Hershey, yeah. Um, also, might I add, we have some uh, other stuff. Um, I do want to give a quick shout out to our friends over there at WASA. Mm -hmm. You can check them out at WASA.org. Mm -hmm. um, they do all sorts of, uh, um, like, goal ball, uh, wheelchair bowling, tennis, and... Lacrosse, basketball, uh, sled hockey, where uh, we have our good old... Like, he's not directly in our section, but he's right in front of us, uh, where we talk to uh, goaltender uh, Steve Johnson of the sled hockey team. But, yep. uh, no, it's like a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, was it the contributions that go to the... 
Like, it's not just to keep their lights on, it's to also fund the sports that they provide for uh, children, adults, and veterans alike. Uh, and they all rely on, uh, they also rely on donations from uh, people like us to viewers like you. Um, best they, way to uh, check them out is at WASA.org. Correct. And you could also go to their page, hit that donate button, and you could donate to them directly. Or you could do Amazon Smile. Yep. Or you could go and buy a shirt from their page. By, by from people of uh, the pe wonderful people of Oscar Mike, mm -hmm. who I've had interactions with in the past. Wonderful people. Their owner's great. He's a veteran. Mm -hmm. um, they help wounded veterans get back in, um, into competitive sports. So um, there's that. And also, we can't forget our wonderful friends at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, Milwaukee's number one stop shop for all your hockey needs. You could get everything from helmets to skates and everything in between and you can even get officiating gear as i understand you just can't find good officials no well wait wait we found a good official you did yes where did you find one firm and south really now yes you, you're changing this this is uh, this is alarming you're changing your two mind firm and south yeah because he kind of um the the Iowa Wow. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, if anybody doesn't know, that's also in our uh, Milwaukee Admirals video. Check it out. <laughs> yes, I'm going to start plugging our other videos. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a subtle plug. I knew it. But no, uh, if you want to go get a reach of a hockey locker in the Milwaukee area, you can call them at 414-800-7585, or you can visit them online at uh, hockeylockermilwaukee.com. Also, upcoming CCM Demo Day. Yep. Uh, what is it? Uh... A hockey Locker is going to be doing a CCM uh, exhibition of sorts. So you get to check out their, uh, what is it, CS CCM's new line items, pretty yep, much? Yep, pretty much. And uh, as long as you don't break it, you can basically hold stuff in your hand. Test it. Test it. Uh, debate whether or not uh, you will uh, basically punch holes in the back of the net with uh, knuckle pucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but... But no, it's a cool event. We're hoping to try and get down there for a little bit of uh, maybe some uh, live video or uh, just posting video of us hanging around Wilson Park. Yep. Can't beat that. All right. But let's get to the main event. Uh, we had an in-Florida rivalry in Hertz Arena in Estero, Florida. Mmm. Donuts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, okay uh, hurts, don't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> My pride always hurts on the show. What are you talking about? But no, uh, Jacksonville came to visit Estero, the home of the Florida I Everblades. So, uh, yeah, uh, also Jacksonville, the uh, Jacksonville Iceman, where there is no ice. Uh, I know. It hurts, too. We don't, <laughs> not every day we have to do a Los Angeles Lakers reference where there are no lakes, but... This is the world we live in. For those in. of you, basketball, uh, go to Netflix. You'll find it. Uh, not sponsored, but a great movie. Why? Because it features a Milwaukee team. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, but I'm just telling them where they can find the movie. This is true. <laughs> but, right, um, so up first, we have some uh, golf claps coming our way because we can't do stick taps at 3 in the morning. My stick's all the way over there. Well, we have uh, that, and we can't do stick taps at 3 in the morning because we've had to re-record this four times. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, golf claps are indeed in uh, order for uh, uh, Everblades' uh, Hunter Garland for being uh, the Warrior Hockey ECHL Player of the Month for, uh, for February. <laughs> I like making him laugh, if you haven't noticed. When he I leads the do. show, I purposely do stuff to make people laugh. <laughs> oh, someday I'll get you. Oh, no, I've gotten you several times. I just, you just don't like talking about it. No. But no, uh, Hunter Garland uh, is the uh, ECHL uh, Warrior Hockey Player of the Month of February, in which uh, Hunter scored uh, seven goals, uh, 12 assists, and was plus 15 in the 12 games during February. And that's a nice feat. That's a really nice feat to have, especially as a rookie. Uh, 25, uh, 25 years old and uh, tallying at least one point in his 10 of 12 outings during February, including seven multi-point games. Uh, uh, Hunter also posted uh, four points and uh, two goals and two assists and a 5-2 to win <coughs> over the Iceman on uh, February 29th and added six other two-point games. That's, like, again, just on paper, that's ridiculously awesome. Yeah, and, and here's the thing. 
We weren't noticing how good he was. We were just like Hunter Garlet, Michael Hunter Baker, Hunter Garlet, Michael Hunter Baker, Hunter Garlet, Michael Hunter Baker. Watching tennis or just watching, you know, consistently icing a puck back and forth. <laughs> but yeah, during a break when two goalies just start shooting the puck back and forth down the ice. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Is anybody going to score? No, everybody's on the side, was that near the benches, just watching. <laughs> yeah. There's no too many men, there's no delay of game, there's actually just ice pong happening. You know, that's what they should do if we ever go to a shootout where we have no goal. <laughs> just have the goalies start launching pucks at each other. <laughs> I would like to see that. Although you'd have to expand the net. <laughs> Is that goal regulation size or what? <laughs> but uh, no, um... In his career, was it in Garland's career, he's a he is a um, he is a signed with the Admirals. Correct. So he signed with the Admirals, and he is already tied seventh amongst uh, uh, other fellow ECHL rookies at forty one points with uh, sixteen goals, twenty five assists, and fifty one games with the Everblades this season. Woo hoo! <laughs> Believe it. At the same time, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, we, like I said, I like making him laugh. Anyway, to also tar- since turning pro, before to, prior to turning pro, Hunter Garland tallied 131 points in for a total of 40 goals, 91 assists, and 90 games at the St. Mary University in Canada in the U Sports League. Now this is the part where you got to just you know kind of lay down a little bit and just wake up and reread it because wow. Uh, he also posted 269 game points uh, amidst a what is it a split between 107 goals, 162 assists in 292 career games between two teams. Between between uh, what was it the Gulf uh, Storm and the, the Petersburg Storm? Peets? Whoa. Okay, Whoa. so let's talk about the runners up. It will be nice. Okay. Um, we have Chase Lang, who plays for the Jacksonville Iceman. Where there is no ice. Um, he has uh, 13 games played, 8 goals, 10 assists for 18 points. Then we have Josh Kistner. Kestner. 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 Her? Kestner. <laughs> uh, Toledo, for the Toledo Walleye. He has 13 games played, 7 goals, and 9 assists for 16 points. Um, also nominated... Was Eric Nelly of the Atlanta Thrashelators? Thrashelators, because their jerseys look like the Thrashers, but they're the Gladiators. So yep. I call them the Thrashelators. Um, uh, send your hate mail to him if you. <laughs> you just hold up a sign like yeah. in uh, a Home Improvement. Yeah. Send all hate mail to <laughs> Al Borland. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, next up, we had Brett McKenzie for the Fort Wayne Comets. Uh, Brett Supinski of the Idaho Steelmen. Steelheads. Uh, uh, steel steel heads, that's right. Steel heads. Uh, Justin Taylor with the Kalamazoo K Wings. Uh, Taylor Camerata with the Orlando Solar Bears. Uh, me with the South Carolina <laughs> Stingrays. Yes, that's Matthew Weiss, uh, my, my hockey doppelganger who will always be better than me. <laughs> uh, Graham Knott with the Wheeling Nailers. And uh, Stefan uh, Fournier of the uh, Wichita Thunder. So No, no lightning in the Thunder? Lightning in the thunder, thunder. You can't sue me. <laughs> it was under 30 seconds. Yeah. So uh, let's get back to why we're really here. Uh, Florida won again. Yeah. Again. Which, uh, Florida won again, especially after uh, clinching, uh, I believe it was clinching before their last game. Yes. Which, that's awesome. Keep your winning ways. That always will, you know, kind of keep just, your flame just going. Just an update. We are close to... Yep. Just so you know. We are, I think, honestly, two games out depending on how the rest of the league shifts around. Yes. So by the end of the weekend, you will know. Yep. So if we, you guys uh, notched in for the Cali Cup playoffs, we should be pretty close to the Calder Cup playoffs too in the, the Milwaukee Admirals organization. But uh, let's get into it. 3-1 uh, to one, uh, Florida Everblades over the Jacksonville Icemen. Hey. Uh, if there were a Florida Cup, I hope you guys get it because you carry the Florida State name and this year, you rightfully deserve a Florida Cup of your own because you guys have been dominating the what's it, the Florida teams. Oh yes, because Orlando Solar Bears, uh, they uh, they flew right into the sun and the uh, Iceman melted. <laughs> and, uh, was it Orlando that's been kind of hit hard with the uh, reassignments? Yeah, they just lost their goalie again. Yeah, so... 
that I don't want to say it, but that's kind of the season there. <laughs> yep. But uh, j- shots on goal. Uh, Jacksonville uh, notched up 37 to Florida's 30, so about even. Uh, but scoring first uh, would uh, be the Florida Everblades with uh, Kyle Newber with uh, an assist by Hugo Watt and Ben Masella. And the third period was, uh, uh, yeah, because there were, no, there were no, no goals in the second period. Uh, third period would be started off by a power play goal by Derek Angeli with a, an assist by Cody Soul and Michael Hunterbrinker, your favorite. Uh, you want to take the next two? All right, so then we have Bobby Lynch with a power play goal with an, for the Jacksonville Iceman with an assist by John Albert and Mike Hedden. Um, then the uh, Florida Everblades retaliated just because they felt like it um, with Leaf Co- Coper and with an assist by Justin Auger and Joe Pendenza. Joe Pendenza um, signed currently by the Admirals. But, uh, yeah, penalties were pretty even. Uh, we got a bench. Mi- was it Florida got a bench minor? Which, again, that will get anybody on my crap list personally because, like, even though Some you're the one of these people, just don't belong here. Yeah. <laughs> well, one of the things, like, when even if you're in a double A, like double A hockey, you can't be making bench minor mistakes. Not this late in the year. No. Um, then the second period, we got a. Uh, uh, slashing penalty from that wascally wacy rabbit. Yep. Oh, this is all in the second period. No penalties in the first. So that's a good way to start off a game. Um, then uh, Chase Lang with a cross checking minor um, for Jacksonville, and then Adam Smith, two minutes for cross checking at the same marker. So they even themselves out. Yep. Then Brendan Fortunato, uh, which. Called for hooking, which. Hooking, it happens. Yep. Hooking, uh, hooking, and uh, I think even slashing is kind of my least favorite call in hockey. Yeah. Dejon Mingo, two minutes for illegal check to the head. Never acceptable. I'm gonna be taking a look at their suspension list. Yeah, it's never acceptable to dock someone in the head like that ever. Um, then Chase Lang, the guy who was just nominated for Player of the Month, um, was called for two minutes for goalkeeper interference. Was nominated. Yeah, for player of the month. Oh yeah, that's right. We just talked. We just about talked it. about it. This is how my one track mind is. <laughs> um, and then uh, Dejan Mingo called uh, for his second penalty of the game with a two minutes for tripping, and then Ben Ben Masala two minutes for hooking. Stop spending time on the south side of Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. It's a Milwaukee reference and a Milwaukee joke. Yep. But um no other than that this was a pretty open shut game like because Florida has been pretty dominant against uh, their other in-state rivals. Yep, the only team giving them headaches this year are the uh South Carolina Stingrays. Yep. Which uh they are carefully nipping at the heels for in both uh the division uh conference and league uh leading. Yep. Uh, Right the, uh, um, with that, um, they are one game back, uh, or one point back, with uh, South Carolina having one game in hand. By game in hand, I mean that uh, they have played one less game than the Florida Everblades. The Everblades sit at 60 games played. The Carolina Stingrays play at, sit at 69. While also, the Allen Americans are nipping at the Everblades' heels with 60 games played and 86 points. Um, three and, points back. And they recently clinched as well. Correct. With uh, Cincy nipping at the Allen Americans heels at 80 points with 60 games played. And we kind of like watching Cincy play. They were our last uh, most recent uh, ECHL affiliate before we went independent for how many seasons? Two, because Two seasons. Norfolk don't count. Yeah, we don't like to talk about that. That's uh, that's uh, buried history. Uh, embezzlement will do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, we get to flip the we get to flip a little bit because uh, we get to go on the road to uh, Jacksonville. Yep. This next game on March sixth, I believe. At That's, six p.m. At six p.m. So we get to basically just play in the 6 other. Six p.m. Central Time. Sorry. Yep. Central. So don't want to confuse Florida. Yeah, we try <laughs> to keep it to a Central Time because both Nashville, like again, best of three, we got two teams that are in Central Time. Yep. Um, did you um, flip the logos around? Because we're oh, I away. should. I should do that. Watch this, everybody. This is a little 
little bit of that magic here. Since we're going on the road, we gotta we gotta do things right because many people with their hashtags don't. Look at that! Look at that! Whoa! <laughs> look at that! I'm dropping mice and freaking out on TV at the same time. <laughs> but look at that! With a good old switcheroo. Yep. Um. So in that, um, we're gonna go with their top two forwards or top four. Top two. Top two. Yes. All right. Top two, and then top. Oh, four. top four. Go with it. Yeah. <laughs> top four. All right. Uh, first up, we have uh, Chase Lang with 55 games played at 18 goals, 29 assists, 47 points at a negative 5. Uh, Mike Hedden with 45 games played, 15 goals, 25 assists, 40 points at a negative 1. Adam Dowda with 50 games played, 14 goals, 14 assists, 28 mm, points. Da -da. Da -da. <laughs> 28 points and a plus 9. And lastly, John Albert with 41 games played, 7 goals, 21 assists, 28 points, and a negative 5. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> On to the defenseman, Dan. <laughs> All right, then we've got Luke Shiplo. Uh, he has uh, 54 games played <laughs> and uh, 4 goals, 21 assists for 25 points, and a plus 4. Then we have Dejan Mingo, 45 games played, 5 goals, 19 assists for 24 points with a minus 12. Um, we also have Trey Phillips with uh, 36 games played, 4 goals, 11 assists, for 15 points and a minus 3. And Hayden Shaw, a 29 games played, 4 goals, 9 assists, for 13 points and a minus 6. On to the goalies. Because there's one that I know you want to talk about. And he, you're sad that he's not here now because he got called up. But well, uh, he got took into the outhouse. <laughs> we're, also, we're we're speaking of Griffin Outhouse, yes. Griffin Outhouse, nine games played, one win, four losses, four point two five goals against average. How did you ever end up in the AHL? Yikes. Uh, next up on the backup list is Ben Halford with nine games played, no wins, two losses, no overtime losses, no shootout losses. With uh, 4.1 games uh, or goals allowed and a save percentage of 86%. And uh, lastly, we have uh, their starter, Adam Carlson, with 38 games played, 17 wins, 15 losses, two overtime losses, and a shutout lot or shootout loss. And one shutout. And one, <laughs> and one shutout. Oh, yes, you're right. I was right. There was a shutout involved. <laughs> yeah, well, um, at least you, you didn't miss it. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, he has a three point, uh, on, like pretty close to three point two games or goals allowed with a eighty nine point four save percentage. So again, their goaltending not the worst, not the best, not the best. <laughs> but um, no outhouse, so that's that's already a downer. Yeah, outhouse has just been taken to the woodshed. Like, we speak also on knowledge because uh, Outhouse uh, played a couple games with the uh, Manitoba Moose. And he got took into the woodshed. <laughs> like, he actually, like, no pun intended, he actually was, like, taken, like, he was replaced at uh, the one game that we attended. Yeah. Was, we were just outscoring them. That was a 5-2 to two game, I think, too. Yeah. They yanked him in the third. Yeah. Which, I know at you had a point, you're... At that point, you're already like down by like three. You just yeah. leave them in there. Just yeah. It's not like a situation with the Rockford Ice Hogs where their coach was just basically letting, you know, their goalie out to dry because. Yeah, five understandable. Six, you're out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, no, we got that game coming up. Uh, pretty soon. Yeah. I, I'm pretty confident that they, they've got this one. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, Florida's... What? Uh, you, you, you shut Last time you said that... You said that against Norfolk. No, I didn't. <laughs> I said don't count them out. Because uh -huh. even though they're bottom of the league, and you said it too, they play for spoil. Bottom teams did that. San Jose did that with the Wild today. Yeah, they smacked them around. And, like, again, like, just because they're not in the same, you know, caliber as, like, the South Carolina Stingrays, Florida Everblades, or the Allen Americans, doesn't mean they can show for a game and play for spoil. Yep. I mean, they are still are playing for their jobs. Yep. Yeah. They're playing for the call-up. Yeah. You got it. But, um, other than that, uh, I honestly think they got a, they got a, they got a win here. Yep. They do. 
We don't know how it will be, but, you know. Um, let's take a, <coughs> a look back at our guys. How did our goalies do? How did our goalies do? Um, yeah, we didn't do a rundown of the goalie for that game. No, we didn't. That is true. Well, let's see. I need to go through our stats again. Yes, yes, you do. All right. Uh, goalies. We had uh, Cam Johnson in net with uh, 36 saves made of... 37. 37. <laughs> oh, yeah. The goal's allowed right there. I can't see it. Scroll down. All right. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. And uh, Cam Johnson also recorded a near 97.3% save, or a save percentage, so not bad. Uh, Adam Carlson had 27 saves of 30, or and a save percentage of 90, so yeah, not that not, bad. Not bad. Not a bad goalie. He did have three goals against, but not that bad. No. And again, like... I think this is more on the fact... It's not the fact that he's a bad goalie. It's that Florida has the forwards and the defensemen to score the goals. Not yeah, and sometimes you just get outskilled. Yes. I mean, we certainly learned... Like, we and the Admirals certainly learned that with the Colorado Eagles against their ace goalie who essentially stood on his head the whole game. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. See their live video of that. On the, the Facebook page, but... Yeah, so, uh, sorry, YouTube, that you guys haven't getting, been getting much love from us lately, but... Uh, you were on the road. Had, yeah, we were on the road. We didn't have much for luxury yeah. of things. Oh, you're doing your rap for impression. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a long story. If You, you have to be in our... Uh, we should do an editorial on why we do certain things on camera. Yeah. <laughs> Or just an editorial of like things of like you do in a hockey section at an Admirals game. Yep. So uh, we are from Milwaukee to Nashville. We certainly are. Yep. Uh, don't forget to check out our uh, Nashville Strong Initiative. The link will be down in the description. Uh, for you YouTube folks, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. For you Facebook folks, don't forget to share, like, and follow our page. Um, also. Don't forget to check out our friends over there at Hockey Locker 2002, West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, Milwaukee's number one stop shop for all your hockey needs. I'm Daniel Goodman. This is Matt Weiss. We are out of here. It is now 3 a.m. Peace. We're going to sleep. Bye, guys. <laughs>